The Michigan Football Report postgame show is presented by BetQL. If you want to win betting NFL games tomorrow, go to chatsports.com slash MichiganQL. Use that promo code CHATMICHIGAN for 25% off a BetQL subscription. Woo! What a game it was, folks. Michigan wins. They're 6-0. I'm feeling good. I want to hear your one-word reaction to the Michigan 32-29 win at Nebraska. Versus the Cornhuskers, it felt so good to see Scott Frost just in shambles at the end of the game. Uh, I guess my word of reaction is relieved because I kind of felt really good heading into the halftime. Third quarter, an absolute disaster. Fourth quarter, Michigan did what it needed to do to win this ballgame. So don't go down the comments. Let me know one word reaction to Michigan 32-29 win against Nebraska. Take a look at the stats before we get into my instant reactions. Cade McNamara had himself a pretty decent game, all things considered. 255 yards on the game for him, 22 of 38. One interception though, okay? He's, he's, he's in the turnover category for uh, for the season right now. 21 carries for Hassan Haskins and a couple touchdowns. Dalen Baldwin, six catches. Was targeted a heck of a lot tonight, uh, that's for sure. Six catches for him and 64 yards. No touchdowns passing for Michigan. Two for Haskins, touchdowns. One for Blake Corum with 13 carries and 89 yards himself. Haskins, 123 yards. And gosh, you know, those running backs really were what Michigan needed today to win this game. And all I can say about this one, my first takeaway of today's game is, folks, it's survive in advance, right? Every team that I know of that's won a national title, won a Big Ten championship, outperformed expectation, has had a game where you thought they're going to win it, something crazy happens, you think they're going to lose it, but they do just enough to win the game there at the end. And that's what I think happened tonight. Michigan survives and advances in this one. I'm relieved. You've got a bye week coming up. You've got Northwestern at home. And then three weeks from tonight, three weeks from today, I guess. I don't think it'll be a night game. Three weeks from today, you've got Michigan State. Uh, potential opportunity for a top 10 matchup between uh, the two schools in Michigan. Both coming off terrible performances last year. Let's take a look at the like, tail of the tape, we'll call it here. The stats of the two teams, 32 points to 29, obviously, for Michigan. Winning the ballgame, 465 yards for Michigan. It felt like they had less. It really did. It felt like Nebraska outgained this team, which was uh, surprising to see the final numbers. 265 or 265, 55 through the air for Michigan, 210 on the ground. At the end of the day, it came down to turnovers, right? Nebraska had a very costly fumble in the last five minutes of the game. Adrian Martinez trying to get extra yards, and he fumbled the ball. He was stripped of the ball. Michigan recovered it. They probably should have tried a little harder to go for a touchdown uh, you know, there at the end, but got the field goal. How about the performance of Jake Moody? I'm going to talk about him more in a video coming up tomorrow, my Michigan football overreaction Sunday video. But, folks, I mean, 911 almost had to be called. I almost had a heart attack. I'm an old man, and, uh, gosh, this was a crazy game because I watched the first half at home, feeling good, up 13 nothing. By the time I did my little selfie halftime show and got into the office here, 10, 12-minute drive, Nebraska had already scored a touchdown. And then Nebraska put 22 points on Michigan in the third quarter. Jim Harbaugh goes for an, kind of an inexplainable two-point conversion in there. I had a heart attack, and then Michigan kicks the field goal. They strip the ball. They kick another field goal, and, uh, and they end up winning this game. Uh, pretty interesting comment. Kate McNamara was on with ABC at the end of the game. And we're trying to paraphrase here because we're trying to get the show out to you guys as fast as possible. And he basically said, I've been here for a few years in Michigan. Past Michigan teams, past Michigan teams on the road would lose this game. And he's basically talking about the fact that Michigan under Jim Harbaugh, the Michigan teams you and I know, we watch every game. I haven't missed a snap from Michigan football snap in 20 years at this point. Uh, maybe I'm, you know, maybe I missed a snap here or there. But he's right. He's right. Michigan doors normally lose this ball game, and I was excited to see him recognize that. And he talked about the chemistry, the heart, uh, the coaching staff, the players playing for each other. It was great to see. Coming off last year, this is as surprising of a, a thing to say that this Michigan team feels like they have chemistry. They're playing for each other. Uh, you know, it's one of the more surprising things I've said on this show, that's for sure, in a long time. So I saw someone tweet this at me. Interesting question I want to pose to you, the Michigan Football Report post-game viewer. Did Michigan win this game, or did Nebraska lose this game? Gluck. It's just us, okay? Just us. I'm going to whisper it here. Don't tell anybody. It doesn't matter. Producer Brett in my ear doesn't matter. But Nebraska lost this game, okay? That fumble for Brady Martinez, what was he doing there? I'll talk about that here in a second. I'm typing N. Nebraska lost this game. Um, but let me know what you guys think down below in the comments, right? That fumble by Kate, <laughs> Kate, that fumble by Adrian Martinez. 
that sums up his, his, his Nebraska career in one play, right? He makes a lot of good plays, and he made a lot of good plays tonight. And he surprised me because I thought Michigan had him figured out in the first half. I thought they actually killed Nebraska Spirits really right out of the start of the gate when they stopped him on that second down, third down, then that fourth down play where they were trying to go for it. Um, but this, this fumble summarizes Adrian Martinez's career, had the opportunity to get a victory against a top 10 team at home, and, uh, and, and we'll see. So we'll, uh, we'll see uh, what comes of this Nebraska team going forward. But I want to tell you guys about BetQL, folks. If you follow BetQL, if you watch the show in the past, you've seen me talking about BetQL for the last month or so, chatsports.com slash MichiganQL. It is a wonderful app, an awesome website, subscription service, $15 a month for college, $20 a month for college and NFL, or just $15 a month for, for college. If you would have followed their, uh, their picks on this game, you would have gone 5-1. and one. Michigan covering the spread, two-star bet. Michigan covering the money line, three-star bet. The over, four-star bet. Michigan first half. Uh, Michigan money line first half and the first half over they lost. So five and one if you would have uh, followed their bets. Jetsports.com slash Michigan UL. I'll put it in the comments. I'll put it down in the description. Hit that link. Download their app. Check them out. If you like them, get a subscription. You'll probably start winning your bets. I love betting on football. I'm putting five games on my on the NFL, which I'll talk to you guys here in a little bit. But go get started with BetQL. Jetsports.com slash Michigan QL. My second takeaway from tonight's game is what happened to the defense in the third quarter. I want to give Scott Frost and this Nebraska offense some credit. They played well. They had a lot of really good play calls, especially, um, you know, guys, right out of the gate. I mean, I got to say especially, I was trying to think of a couple plays. I'm like, oh, they had a lot of good plays. I can't even give in especially. Yeah, I mean, the, the running back uh, wheel route they had, those two tight ends going left and, and left uh, Aiden um, you know, Hutchinson on an island. The defense really struggled in the third quarter, but – what was good to see is they recovered in the third quarter, right? Nebraska goes 22 points in the third quarter, only gets that one touchdown in the fourth quarter. So Mike McDonald's defense is going to have to perform a lot better moving forward if you're going to beat the likes of a top five Penn State team that won today. An Ohio State team that another week or two, they'll probably be in the top five. Uh, you've got Michigan State, who will be a top 10 team most likely tomorrow. Um, you're going on the road to play, to play them in three weeks. So this team, if you want to go undefeated, if you want to even go to November undefeated, uh, you're going to have to have a better performance than tonight. But some great plays. Daxon Hill with an interception. Um, the strip the strip there at the end of Andy Martinez. So they came through and it counted. But a pretty tough third quarter for this team. I want to ask you guys, though, to subscribe to the channel. YouTube.com slash Michigan TV. We're getting close. We're getting close to catching the Michigan podcast. Steve D. He's about 300 or so subscribers ahead of us. We're going to do it with you guys. I said, nothing against him, but he's the largest podcast YouTube show for Michigan football out there as far as subscribers. I think we passed him last year. Somebody that passed over the summer. Whatever. We're going to get him. You and me. If you subscribe to both channels, that's fine. I'm sure he puts out good content. But make sure you subscribe to this one. We're putting out more Michigan football videos than any single media outlet in the history of the planet youtube.com slash michigan tv all right number three kate mcnamara i had uh i was bipolar on kate all night right i thought he missed a lot of throws in the first half but i thought he played well enough in the second half to win the game and at the end of the day that's all that counts that is really all that counts for uh for this program and for kate mcnamara 22 of 38 255 no touchdown passes, and did throw his first interception of his college football career tonight. Um, and it was a bad pass. I mean, he just threw it right to the defender. I'm sure there was some sort of miscommunication. But there were a few plays in the first half, a uh, Dalen Baldwin deep pass in particular, that I said to myself, J.J. McCarthy would have hit that pass. He would have hit him right in stride. They would have walk-in touchdown. But give him credit, right? How many times has Michigan started 6-0 in the past 25 years, 20, 30 years? If they win against Michigan State, I think I read this would be the fifth time in the past 30 years Michigan's gone into the month of November undefeated. That would be pretty impressive if they get that victory on the road at a Michigan State team that's just looking better and better as the weeks go by. A very surprising performance uh, from them all season long. But Josh Gass, been saying this for weeks. I still think he's kind of a bum, but he got the win tonight. I'll give him a C, right? C plus maybe. I don't know what you guys think about Josh Gass' performance tonight. Give me an A, B, C, D, or F for Josh Gass. I'll give a C plus. I'll be nice. All right. That was some really challenging, really confusing calls in the red zone in particular. But when everything counted at the end of the day, they got the victory. He got on Jake Moody kicking all his field goals, but I'm giving him a C plus. All right, let's talk about Cade McNamara a little more. Reminds me of Craig Krenzel. I saw some people on Twitter say, say saying that uh, you know Jim Harbaugh, he's trying to switch his offense. They're playing trestle ball. And I'm like, you know, Cade McNamara watching him play today, he reminds me of Craig Krenzel. 
He hits a couple of passes per game that you maybe don't expect him to hit. He underthrows some passes, but he doesn't make mistakes. Made one tonight, okay. But Craig Krenzel won a national title, right? Craig Krenzel went 2-1 and one against Michigan. Um, Craig Krenzel got Ohio State to a top five victory his second year after that, in 2003, after they won the national title in 2002. So uh, you can do a lot worse than Craig Krenzel. If that's what Michigan gets, uh, I'd probably be happy that for this year that let him and J.J. McCarthy battle it out in the, the offseason. But I was uh, – Pleasantly surprised by Cade tonight. When it counted, he made the plays. He made the throws he needed to to get a victory in a very, you know, excited and rowdy atmosphere in a game that seemed like, like he said, Michigan was about to lose, about to just crumble and uh, take a loss against a 3-3 three and three at that time, Nebraska football team. So one more time, though, guys, let me know your one-word reaction. As I said, my name, my, my one-word reaction is relieved, I think I said. Maybe I said surprise. Relieved, I think is what I said earlier uh, in the show let me know what yours are. Go down. Let's get the comment section rolling in this game. Just let me know what you feel about this team. Let me know what you think about this game. Tell me if you if you if you spiked a football and knocked something over like I did. If you smacked a beer across, you took a beer can and crushed it against your head. Let me know how you're feeling this game. Get down in the comments and light them up. Michigan gets the win, so keep them positive. But you know, we all go through the same amount of emotions in this game. Then you know, we you went through the same ones as I went through. A lot of highs, a lot of lows. All right, number four, the white pants suck. Get rid of them. They're terrible to look at. And frankly, they're bad luck. They are bad luck. Why do you keep going back? It's like, hey, honey, we've had a terrible marriage. We're cheating on each other. We fight all the time. But let's take another honeymoon like we did to Cabo back in 87 where we got in a huge fight then. That's the white pants, okay? They're the Cabo honeymoon that we fought about the whole time 25 years ago. Now we're trying to save the marriage by having a kid in our mid-40s. Just stop it with the white pants. It's a disaster. They look ugly. They play ugly in them. And Jim Harbaugh, that's your ex-wife. Get past her. Quit texting her at 3 in the morning. I miss you. Your current wife, the blue pants, are sitting right here. Just curl over. Give her, give her one of these. Give her one of these, you know? A little, a little spoon in the action, okay? Quit with the white pants. They are a disaster. Stick to the blue pants. Stick to the maze pants. Whatever it is, the white pants, absolute disaster. They're bad luck. They look bad. I don't want to see them anymore. <sighs> Thank you. I got producer in my ear saying, okay, that's enough. That's, that's enough. That's enough, James. Just move on, okay? My NFL picks for uh, for tomorrow. If you watch this Sunday, uh, here's my picks for tomorrow. Watch on Saturday night. You get an early jump on them. Vikings minus nine at the Lions. I think they're going to crush the Lions. Texans, I think they're going to cover that 10-point spread. They looked terrible last week. I don't think the other one's got it. Uh, Denver, Pittsburgh, under 39.5, one of the lowest unders I've seen in the NFL this year so far. Eagles plus 3.5 versus the Panthers at the Panthers. And then the Titans, I think they're going to take advantage of Urban Meyer and the 1, 2, 3, grind. That whole thing that's going to either go really good for them or really bad. I'm picking really bad. And if you guys want to bet games, if you're in the state of Michigan and a few other states, you know, the states that have legal gambling with BetMGM, you can get the BetQL service for free for a year just by signing up and making your first deposit with BetMGM and then making a $10 bet. So go to chatsports.com slash MichiganMGM. Comment will also be down in the description and the comments. Click that link. Go to it. Put your first deposit down with BetMGM. Choose your state. Get an account with BetMGM. $10 in and then make your first $10 bet. You'll get an email from BetQL with a one-year subscription for free. Make sure you take advantage of that offer. Win your bets with MGM. And heck, I've, I've, I'm on a, I'm a pretty good run. Seven and three over the last two weeks. Only using BetQL as my picks. So use the app, win money, get uh, get going with BetMGM as well. All right, number five. It's three weeks away. But I don't think this Northwestern team in two weeks will pose much of a threat at home. Maybe I could be wrong. Right? Could be a little classic Look ahead game, Michigan gets stunned. I doubt it. We'll see. But you got to beat Michigan State. After last year's loss, one of the two or three most inexplicable losses in the past 40 years of Michigan football, you cannot lose to them on the road. That would mean Jim Harbaugh has a losing record against Michigan State in seven years. He's 3-3 three and three now. Go to 3-4 and four against them. That means they'll cement themselves, if they're still undefeated, as a top five, six, seven team in the country, right in the thick of the national title race. And it means that they'll, frankly, if you look at the recruiting lately, They'll have two wins straight against Michigan. They'll be the kings of the state. This is a must-win game. This is a absolute must-win game. And if they win it, man, 8-0, and folks, would sound so good heading into November. It rarely happens for a Michigan football team. Ah, 2016 it happened. Prior to that, what, 2006? Prior to that, I can't. I mean, 2006. No, I lost in 2006. I don't know. 97 might be the prior, the one prior to that. So, 8-0 would feel great. It would sound great. I'd love to see it. 
and uh, we'll see what they get. Three weeks from tonight will be the game. There are more one more, more pivotal games in uh, in this rivalry in a long time. All right, we'll be back tomorrow with Michigan football overreaction Sunday. We're going to think about all the crazy things you guys are saying on Twitter and on the internet. And we're going to uh, overreact along with you. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. It's YouTube.com slash Michigan TV. Until tomorrow, go Blue.